What are we to do? Hermy shouted as he read the local newspaper. Opero Chapel in danger of closing due to lack of funds. Father looked forlornly at the newspaper. Hermy, do you realise? Polpero Fisherman's Choir and I have rehearsed in the chapel for nearly one hundred years. <laughs> Father, don't you think that was a very silly statement? He looked sternly at Hermy and asked, Why? Well, the choir are nearly one hundred years old. And if you had been conducting them all that time, you would be approximately one hundred and seventy-one years old. You know what, Hermie, I think you may be correct in your observations. Well done. Father and Hermie then looked up at the roof, and there was a chink of light coming through the tiles. They both looked in amazement to see the sun poking its rays between the gaps in the tiles. Well, there's the problem, Hermie suggested. If the sun is getting through, so will the rain. My word, you're on form this morning, Hermie. How about you think of some fundraising ideas to help pay for a new roof? Hermie slowly lay down on the carpet, with his head resting on the altar step, and contemplated. After a few moments of deep thought, he sat up. I know. How about we repaint the chapel in a very jolly colour to encourage people to come in? Not a bad idea, Hermie. Do you have a suggested colour? Yes, I do. Could you be so bold as to let me know the suggested colour? Yes, orange. Hermie, who would want to see a chapel in ancient Polpero draped in a coating of orange paint? I would, smiled Hermie. Father sighed. Well, it's a possibility. But do you have any other interesting ideas? Actually, I do. How about a sponsored dog barking competition? Hermie said as he cleared his throat ready for a short demonstration. I'm not sure if the neighbours would like the noise. They seem to put up with the choir rehearsals every Wednesday night. Father looked very sternly towards Hermie. Hermie, I think yet again we should leave this conversation and concentrate on other matters in hand. Father paced up and down a few times, thinking, and then a few more paces until... A choir competition, right here in the chapel. We could invite all the local choirs, such as Plint, Saltash, Burriton, Leveni, and, of course, the Rain Male Voice Choir. Hermie smiled up at Father and winked. What a wonderful idea! and maybe combine it with the dog-barking competition. I'm not sure that would work, Hermie. The barking sounds from the dogs might clash with the growls of the basses. After much discussion, the pair agreed on a combined choir concert, with a dog-barking encore to finish the evening. On the night, the choirs gathered in various pubs around the village. In the Blue Peter, Rain Choir went upstairs to run through their piece. The noughts and crosses rocked with Laveni rehearsing their latest African tune. The others went to the tea rooms. The Polpero Fisherman's Choir turned into the Polpero Wreckers and sang their Cornish songs and shanties in the ship, whilst also sampling a pint or three. My word, father, what a lot of people, Hermie said as they headed back to the chapel and saw the audience crowding in through the large double doors. The chapel was bursting at the seams by the time the much-awaited concert started. Each choir sang in turn for a few minutes each. When it was the turn of the Paul Perra Fisherman's Choir, Hermie and Wilma took their place right at the front, as they were the choir's very popular doggy mascots. When all the choirs had finished, there was the sound of barking coming from the back of the chapel. We're here! shouted Jones, the border collie, from the doghouse. The audience suddenly went silent and looked in amazement as the line of dogs filed into the chapel. How about you bark in time to a song? shouted Ollie from the balcony. Proper job is the best one for that. Rufus, my great Dane, barks to it every morning.
another voice suggested from the back of the church. Phil the conductor thought for a moment and then smiled. What a clever idea! And I think I will walk in from the back of the chapel as Lorraine plays the introduction to give it its full effect. The atmosphere was electric as the dogs pushed and shoved to get their best position on the stage. Phil the conductor waited at the back of the chapel as Lorraine started the introduction to Proper Job on the piano. He then walked briskly to the podium and started to conduct the gathered musicians. Is there a land where cream is cream and where a man has time to dream? Is there a place where peace is peace and where the race for change can cease? The audience rose to their feet and joined in as the dogs barked their rendition of the famous Gough Richards and David Dearlove piece. It resounded around the chapel. Even outside, the holiday makers heard the music and poured into the chapel, making generous donations to the much-needed chapel fund. Have you seen how much we have raised, Angie? Cathy said as they started counting the donations. Maybe we won't have to lose our wonderful chapel after all. The choir sang their hearts out, knowing what a great cause this was for, and after the last note, the conductor turned to the audience and said, Would you like another? More, more, was the resounding response from the now ecstatic crowd. Phil gave the nod to Lorraine, the pianist, as he knew she would know what to do next. She smiled and placed her fingers on the keyboard. Suddenly, the chapel was filled with the exciting introduction to Kalinka, a favourite Russian encore. The stamping of the audience's feet vibrated around as the choirs took in their first breath. Well, call blimey! A cockney in the audience shouted. The joint choirs sung with gusto as the conductor encouraged the audience to join in with excited clapping. After the last note resounded around the hall, the audience rose to their feet and clapped so loudly the seagulls left the roof. Hermes stepped forward and there was a sudden hush in the chapel as everyone slowly sat down again and regain their composure. Hermie then asked Adrian if he might compare the raffle. Adrian had been comparing the choir for many years and took up the challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, and dogs, before I start, could I thank you for being such a wonderful audience? Now, shall we start with this prize? It has been very kindly donated by Gina's gallery on the quay and is one of her wonderful paintings of the Three Pilchards pub by the harbour. If you look closely in one of the windows, there is an impression of the pub ghost. The bidding was fierce until it sold for £120 to a visitor from Sussex. Next, we have a wonderful prize donated by the Knots and Crosses. This is a most unusual prize donated by Nicola and Simon, who have recently taken the running of the pub. As some of you may know, the pub is haunted by a jealous maid who insists the towels are placed at the top of the bed, and not the bottom where today's cleaners place them. I think you will find that is the crumpled horn, one of the locals suggested. Just another silly ghost story, Wilma moaned. It's true. Hermie insisted as he raised his head from a rather sleepy sleep. What's the prize? A voice from the gallery inquired. Adrian looked up to the interested person at the back of the gallery. The unusual prize is a tour of the haunted pub. He then started the bidding. Can we start at twenty pounds? Slowly the figures rose to an unbelievable £20.50. Come on! Surely it's worth more than £20.50! Suddenly an internet bid came in from America. £500! My word! Hermie shouted as he adjusted his pillow. Well, that'll do! Adrian concluded as he put down his gavel. 
David, the chairman of Paul Perrow Fisherman's Choir, then stepped forward. I would like to thank you all for the generous bids, and of course to Adrian for his wonderful auctioneering. Cathy from the chapel committee then came forward. As chief fundraiser for the chapel, I would like to thank the choirs and of course the Mutt Choir for their wonderful contribution. Excuse me? We are not mutts, but man's best friends, Hermie interjected. I am so sorry, Hermie. What was I thinking? Could I thank the Canine Choral Society for their wonderful rendition of the world-famous bark piece? Cathy said apologetically. My sheep are fond of that one too, a farmer shouted from the audience. They bar to slightly different words, though. Don't tell me. Sheep may you safely graze, Hermie said. Got it in one, said the farmer. The dogs rose from their various sleeping positions and took a bow-wow. The audience then stood as the choirs finished the evening with Trelawney, the famous Cornish anthem. Well, I think we've done brilliantly tonight, Angela said as the audience left and the takings were counted. Thank you, Hermie, for having such a wonderful idea. The End